Hello everyone and welcome back to another Babylon Irons video with myself, Mike and Slough today. Another debate video while it's the international break. Um, and Well, not a debate, just highlighting how important Alvarez is to this West Ham team and, you know, the impact he's had since joining. You know, it was someone we spoke about, uh, Mike has especially given you credit to that one with the scouting uh, before, you know, we were even linked with him really from the summer. So it was a player that was always on kind of our radar on Babylon and, you know, it was it was a move we were really pushing for. And, you know, he was close to going to Dortmund. Um, that didn't happen. Then became available for us to kind of swoop in. And, you know, it's been a brilliant signing. And, you know, there was a lot of talk and still is around the loss of, uh, you know, Declan Rice and how we were going to spend that 100 million and how we were ever going to replace him, how there was ever going to be life after him. Well, there is. Uh, we're currently seventh in the league, you know, firing in Europe again. And the team looks to have, you know, really come together and improved as a whole. So, Let's talk about Alvarez and the importance of him and, you know, just how good he is at anchoring that kind of midfield and, and playing as that six who's, you know, provided us with a lot of defensive stability since he's come into the into the team. Go on, Sloth, you go. <laughs> I've had a lot to say about Alvarez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was waiting to let you go, Rika, but <laughs> I think it's 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 really has been one of the, the signings of the season. And I think when we look at this West Ham side at the moment, you know, we have got some real contenders for that across any of the sides in the league, you know, Ward Prowse in particular. Um, I think he's been the the perhaps the headline grabber, but Alvarez has been just as important in that uh, that central defensive midfield role. And one thing that I think we both uh, spoke about quite um quite heavily was this myth that he wasn't very good on the ball. And I don't know why I don't know if it was just Ajax fans potentially like you know, a bit of sour grapes or spurned lovers. Um, <laughs> I don't mean that any disrespect to uh, spurned lovers out there, but yeah, I think um, it was there, a case that, that right now. <laughs> I think it. I, I think it was a case that just overnight someone said he's not very good on the ball, and it seemed to spread. And he's just come in and proved that wrong. He looks so composed. And obviously there was that little turn in the Chelsea game when he was in the, his own area and he just very calmly took it away and started to move with it. Oh, I did it and, and, as well, didn't he? He did a yeah. kind of Cruyff turn and yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of the things that I think his calmness and willingness to not take risks, but find space in the in, in the defensive area is is really reaping benefits for us. What I, what I like before I let you go, Mike, because I know you're ready to go. But um, what what I've liked about Alvarez, you know, it wasn't someone I'd particularly watched before. You know, going off a lot of what you guys said and the data. What I really like about him is he's allowing us to to move away from the importance of having someone like him to drive us forwards and you know do everything by himself. He doesn't need to do that now with, you know, when we're playing Paqueta and War Prowse in midfield alongside him or, or you know, Paqueta on the left and Suchek inside. There's less impetus on him to, to do that. And, you know, he can just do the anchor role really well. You know, like you were mentioning, he's very good on the ball. He won't just look to play backwards and sideways all the time. He will try and make things happen. Uh, I think we saw in the in the Luton game uh, near the beginning of the season, you know, he was really involved in our in our first goal that we scored there. You know, he was the one that started to move by playing some, you know, breaking the line passes. He did it the other day against Sheffield United, you know, started off that move that, that got us the first goal. So he is someone that will create from deep, you know, it's, it's a different type of creation, but he does start moves well. And he's obviously got that defensive side and, you know, he's got that, the thing that West Ham fans absolutely love, which is, you know, flying into tackles, picking up yellow cards. I think he's still one game away from suspension already. So that's the type of player he is, but that's the type of player we like to watch. And he's also got the technical ability to back it up as well, which is which is what's made him such a good player for us so far. And yeah, Mike, what would you uh, what would you rate him so far in a West Ham shirt? And was it what you expected? What I expected? Uh I think if, I think I probably maybe expected him to have a goal by now from a from a corner, uh, which again he came close against Newcastle. It mm, was, yeah. uh, was very close, um, but yeah, it's kind of what I expected. I was pretty vehemently saying, you know, in the face of others going, "Why isn't that maybe that good in the ball?" Well, I was like, "Well, he is. He, he's good in possession. He works in tight spaces. He can sometimes get caught out." But again, I think in some cases, a bit like when we saw. If you ever watched Van Dyke when he was playing in like kind of Celtic, it was too easy in some respects, and he got caught on the ball and was lazy because just concentration. I think last year as well, 
certain things happened at Ajax as well. And I think certain players were maybe taking their foot off the gas a little and getting a bit in, in, uh, a bit complacent. But if you've watched him over the last however many years he's been at Ajax, he's been one of the standout players, defensively resolute, strong, aggressive, playing in that centre midfield or the centre back position. As we constantly said throughout the entire summer, the one thing he will allow us to do has been is so evident is ridiculous was the fact that I said that he will allow us to build up with both of our centre backs being able to go wide to for our full backs to be pushed up a bit more aggressively and a bit higher and he will drop in the middle to help us to maintain possession and I think he does that better than what Rice did because what Rice did is Rice came on to the left hand side of our yeah. defence he drops directly into that middle so all of a sudden he has a much wider angle or much wider pitch to play within where rice came to that left hand side he was a bit more limited in terms of the the space he could play into obviously rice they would then usually gallop forward and so yeah. on um let's not say alvarez is much better than that rice it's just a different complexion as to how we can play tactically yes he is <laughs> <laughs> but you know quite frankly one of the things that i said was i don't care about rice going because i think we can find players and i think if we get the right players it kind of will be a bit like Rice Who. And as far as I'm concerned, that is my attitude 100% right now. I was completely wrong about one of the players in Ward Prowse. Gladly hold my hands up. It's been phenomenal. Yeah. Yes. We all were. Yeah. I think we all were. <laughs> you know, uh, but Alvarez, we were steadfast and he comes in. That's all that defensive side that we needed from Rice. He also covers a fair bit of that possession side. And if we got a proper possession based midfielder who could drive, then it would allow us to then completely cover what Rice did and also elevate our midfield because if he was, maybe Suchek would be, you know, out yeah. on with number 10, etc. But what it has done, it has given us that complete solidity. The way he moves across the kind of the vertical of the pitch is impressive. He essentially dictates where teams go when they come near him. The way he moves around, he's always in a position where he can turn his body and get into a position in which to uh, kind of you know make them turn backwards to, to yeah. put in a challenge and yeah I think one thing that every West Ham fan loves is it's a player who doesn't care about who he's faced up against he will clatter anyone if the ball is there to be won he's going in for it sometimes it's reckless sometimes it's you know it leaves you a bit heart in the mouth because you're like oh, this is going to be another card and the way he plays you sometimes think he made him do it again but his aggression is actually so well kind of contained that it doesn't ever kind of boil over into that point, you know, like a, what we saw Gimresh do. He's not been anywhere near as stupid or moronic as that and have the good graces of a as a ref to keep him on the pitch. Um, but yeah, I'm not letting that go. <laughs> <laughs> what about what about you know, we, we've said a lot about you know how good Alvarez has been, you know, he absolutely has made such an impact on this team already and in such a short space of time. Have you have you guys noticed anything where you think maybe that's an area to improve or maybe to take his game to the next level when he's playing for West Ham? Is there anything that's that's missing at the moment that he could be you know potentially adding to the team as a you know being all, you know hypercritical of it of, of, the, of the situation? All carries um, is one that I would say he's, he's I've not seen him do nearly as much of. Um, it's something probably you could do. Um, Aerially has been fairly strong, but probably could be stronger if, we, if we're being pedantic. And also, I would say maybe more of a threat from a set piece. And this is again, this is just being pedantic because you've yeah. asked a question. But you know, by the Newcastle one, he hasn't really caused a threat from set pieces. But when you watched him at Ajax, he was one of those key players. Arguably, he was utilised more. Um, but they're probably the only areas you could. could uh, you know, the other one, I'd love, I guess the last one you could say is discipline because as you say he's already near probably a suspension. Yeah. However, I think if you take that away from Alvarez, that did that that level of aggression, you we wouldn't have we wouldn't be talking about Alvarez as we are now because we'd, you'd lose so much of him as a player. And I think that would actually make him a very average defensive yeah. midfielder. This allows him to be that that player that you stand up and kind of you notice from time to time like you do with any good defensive midfielder. And then the rest of the time, you kind of forget they're there. But if they're not, like Man City is seeing with Rodri, by God, you notice it. What about I you? Think one, of the things, one of the things that we've really seen, I mean, the only criticism that I would have is the discipline, you know, but, but he, does, he does what's needed. And, and you know, for, 
for so long of last season, we were talking about how we need those the dark arts at West Ham and we need players who are willing to kind of make a challenge and pick up a card. Paquette has been fantastic at that and, you know, perhaps risks it a bit too much with the old uh, birthday <laughs> card celebration. But I think Alvarez really kind of is walking that tightrope at the moment where it could come back to bite us in the backside. You know, if, he, if he's up, um, if we're going into a game against like Everton and after the Villa game, he's picked up another card, then we're going to potentially lose him for a match. And yeah. one of the things that I think we've really seen this season is where Declan Rice was the sitting mid, uh, was kind of the sitting force in our midfield. And he would leave him out of position so much. Um, he would create so much space in behind that Suchek couldn't fill or was too far in advance with. It put pressure on the on our wing backs. Players like Sue Fallon and Cresswell were just brought out and under pressure immediately. Yeah. They couldn't cope with the pace that was coming at them because there was so much space around them. Whereas having an anchor like um, Alvarez in that position, it allows Aguirre to drift a little bit wider. It allows Zuma to do exactly the same sort of thing. And players like Emerson and Sue Fallon can bomb up and down each side. They don't have as much... Um, space in between all the uh, the attack in the midfield the defense in the midfield yeah. to worry about so i think it's one of the things that he's really shone at and and showed what we've lacked on either side of the pitch yeah no i think that's a that's a massive point you know last season yeah yes rice was a lot of the time carrying the ball forwards and making things happen but also left a ton of space you know whenever we tried to do that how many times did we get caught on the counter attack so easily just because of you know that gap like you were mentioning and, and Suchek you know having to be the one to sit in again that in turn has been a positive in Suchek's form you know Alvarez coming in it's allowed Suchek to to almost completely train you know change his mindset back to what it was in terms of you know I'm going to arrive in the box I'm going to impact areas I can actually impact and we're starting to see you know return from that in turn you know he scored four goals already this season so there's definitely been so many positives like we were mentioning there the the, the negatives are very hypercritical uh, a bit exaggerated just trying to pick out where he where his flaws have been but really there hasn't been many you know there really hasn't the only thing is really that discipline and you know if he does come out of the team we then have to to bring in someone like Suchek as the six so we don't really have too much replacement in that position but yeah let us know what you guys think in the comments about Alvarez uh, was it what you expected have you been pleasantly surprised uh, maybe give him a score out of 10 so far as our as a transfer sign in for West Ham this summer so yeah, that's going to be all for today. Um, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And lads, until next time. Come on, you lions. Right.